Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's uh, webinar. The topic of today's webinar is creating and utilizing UPV reports and data sheets. Um, well, short introduction. Um, for those who have already worked with UPV, you might know that UPV has actually built in quite powerful reporting engine. And um, today, we actually want to show you how to create reports and um, what type of reports you can actually generate from UPV. So the agenda for today includes creating a quick reports from inside UPV, saving and editing reports for reuse, working with those saved default reports, and um, we're going to, I'm going to show you a few report examples, uh, like material takeoffs, equipment list, uh, an interference check, which is an imported uh, clash report in this case, or for example, a comparison of P9D to 3D reports and so on. And uh, finally, we also want to show you how you can actually use the output file of uh, the UPV report to uh, create data sheets. So um, this being said, um, I'd say we switch to the live demo. And I've already opened the model here. So um, where do we find the reporting function? The reporting function is to be found um, in the main menu on the left side under file management. And it's this icon here, create report. So right now we're going to create a simple report just to get the equipment from uh, this model. So we say new, choose export elements. So you can choose include sketch data if you have sketches in there, um, just the visible elements, just the selected part of the plant or all. In this case, we'll choose all and uh, choose, first of all, name or equipment name oh so we'll just leave it a name um and use type to actually narrow it down and um let me see well, what else can we do um well we'll leave it with this so i'll just click okay you already see it's um, given me already some results here. Uh, unfortunately, as you can um, tell, we got also some fittings in here. So it's not all equipment. Um, how can we actually narrow this down? Um, we have to edit the report and add task. Because with task, we can filter it down a little bit. And I'll set the task after the name, between name and type. And when we click OK, so you see I click the gear, um, and suddenly um, we get the direct result. So we want to narrow it down. We want equipment only, because if we scroll down here, you see we get piping and actually all tasks we have here in the plant. We can do that easily by right-clicking on equipment and say, oh, now I've hidden it. No problem. Just delete the filter up here. Again, right click the equipment, say show. And now we have uh, exclusively, see now 176 out of 5,018 rows. So we've got equipment only here, we'd assume. But no, unfortunately, we also have um, nozzles. So we want to exclude some of these. For example, type nozzle, we want to hide that. And you see piping appeared again. So don't worry with this. We also want to exclude bolted. We want to exclude male. Why are these still shown? It's this little button here 
because the conditions and filters um, are by default set to OR. So it has to fit one or the other condition. The moment we click this, we change this to an end um, condition. And now we got only equipment in here. So we can also say, okay, we don't want anything without a name. We don't want a blanks. And now we got an efficient report on the equipment that's present in the 3D. And uh, as you can uh, tell, it also has different types of uh, name tags. Doesn't matter. It comes from different authoring systems. In this case, we have um, actually equipment coming from PDS, from uh, Smart 3D, and from PDMS. Uh, and yet we can generate a report over all of this. So what do we do, we do with this report? Um, when we go back to 3D, you've seen actually that this uh, window was black, so no available report definitions. So if we want to save this report, there's this button here saying copy current report definition. And it says report definition was copied to clipboard. And when we go into our demo plant here, I open up the report definition file. And I just paste, hit paste, and our report is going to be saved. In this case, I can even pre-filter in the Excel file, say, OK, I want task to be equipment. I can actually give it a better name and say equipment list and here description list of eqps in the model i save the file i don't even have to close it when i go back to upv i can close our new report we created here and I say okay create a report now you see we got equipment list here so this uh, can also be used um, to check name conventions, for example, and um, check if the tags are properly named or if you have uh, mismatches there. So there's a different type of usage for the report. So what else can we do? We can actually export and save this report by saying, okay, save, equipment list, and it will be automatically opened in this case in Excel, we've got the report we've defined before. Except for the live filters, um, these have to be set separately. So um, what type of reports can we actually generate with, with it? So when we go back to our list, um, creating a quick report just by dragging, the attributes you need to the right, and they will be a consistent part of the report. Saving and editing reports, you can actually edit them with a gear symbol or in the Excel file for the report definitions. Working with default reports, well, there's two ways to actually deal with these default reports. Um, what I'm going to do now is um, this report definition we just created. I'm going to rename it to simple. And I have prepared um, a different report definition that has some more reports in it, as uh, some of you might have uh, already seen in our demo model um, that's linked by default in a new UPV installation. So let's close this equipment list here and again create a report. So now you already see we got quite a few more um, reports here. So this can be as simple as a piping material takeoff. We get, got the pipeline, the nominal pipe diameter, commodity code description, and the element count. And um, by taking in additional attributes, you can basically enhance um, this list any any way you need it. 
So what's besides uh, material takeoffs? The equipment list we've already seen, a nozzle list, pipeline and color. Valve condition is, uh, for example, an interesting um, report here um, because it contains a reporting over custom attributes. So um, this means when I click on an object, it's uh, always linked to the actual, actual object in 3D. So when I click here, um, it will actually um, navigate us to the according object in 3D. So in this case, we see, okay, condition is unknown, reason, action, and C. Um, this goes also for several other um, valves here. So we could go ahead and click each valve individually and change this condition. But if we know the name, from the report, we can sort the report alphabetically and say, okay, these two valves here, I'll just highlight them by holding control down. I can then choose from the code list and say, okay, these two are okay. And when we go back to 3DC condition set to okay. And we can uh, even go further and uh, set the reason to Okay, not available. Why? This is hierarchical attributes, so um, I'd have to choose no okay. And now I can say okay, because it's rusty, both of them, and um, we'll need replacement. And when I go back to the 3D model, you see it's actually um, updated the values directly. So that's another use case for the reporting. And another um, quite interesting use case is if you have uh, Clash reports, um, you can actually uh, import them by SDK into UPV and by that actually generate a Clash report in here with the well additional function of having a custom attribute like state. So when I go to the interference, I can actually see, okay, we got some several interferences here because um, there's just a few objects that don't fit. But uh, let's say I don't, I wouldn't consider this as an as a real interference because there's enough space around there, so it might be something the authoring system not really fitting 100%. Um, so I could say, um, okay, state is not undefined. I'd say action is not to be taken. This is okay. So when I go back to my interference report, I can actually do um, a real review of the interferences and separate them into this needs to be fixed or this is approved. So that's this is yet another option you have with the default report um, in our demo model. In case you have some individual questions or um, individual ideas, um, how would you, li how you would like to utilize um, the reporting engine, feel free, just send us an email and um, we'll find the proper solution for your issue. Besides that, um, we were actually quite often asked, well, we've got all this data in UPV and um, during um, like the construction phase or planning, the data sheets or actually the, the data of um, objects keeps changing. But for the final documentation, we need some final data sheets. Is there a way to generate those from uh, UPV? And the question is actually not directly from UPV, but so um, a solution we wanted to present here is yet another report. First of all, let me get out of the out of the interferences. Okay, this one's been approved. 
and create a new report, which I called VAF list. So when I open this report, um, you will already see, okay, this is really a lot of attributes we put in here. So there's really no way to sensibly read that. Um, so one option is directly after I cre created the report to save it to Excel. Well, we don't have to do that. If you know you um, that this re report is working for you, you create a report and directly in this um, report defin definition selection, you actually have two buttons here. One is to edit the report as we did before. The other one is to directly save um, the report to your disk. So in this case, I'll um, overwrite this one here, data sheet export. And um, it's creating the report. So what we're, do, uh, what we're doing here, so is we're creating a report, just an Excel file, and we're using this as a data source for a um, Word mailings document. Basically, um, you create a form in Word and use the UPV export as a data source to um, actually display um, these data sheets. So yes, I would like to continue. And um, you already see, let me turn off the preview results. So you see we have a definition um, with some data fields set. And when we say, okay, go ahead and preview the results, you see that we're actually getting the process design data, process operating data, service and certifications, uh, name, function, type, even the pipe run it's located in, what fluid or face um, it has. And uh, by using these arrow buttons up here, we can even scroll um, through these 11 valves we now exported. And uh, basically you can see as we click along, scroll along, um, the values are changing and adapting. So yet um, another feature that really makes life easier. And one of the most often requested um, well, functions was, well, do we have any way to actually find out if, um, for example, certain equipment has already been uh, modeled in 3D. And um, this works this way. Hold on, let me go back to our default view. Startup view, great. So, resetting the coloring. So let's pick this D240, go to attributes and open the according and pin ID. And now we'll create a new report from pin ID. Um, basically checking, okay, we've got some equipment here. Is that represented in 3D? Um, in order to do so, we created a custom attribute, uh, which is <clears throat> basically a calculation. Um, you see here, it's called named in the lower right corner, UPV exists in 3D is true. And um, once you add this calculation, it checks for linking between your um, pin ID and 3D, and if a link is present, then um, this flag is set automatically on UPV startup. So now we say, okay, I want a new um, report. So I'll pick drawing name, that would help. Then um, the equipment item tag, which is also good. And I want uh, the information, does it exist in 3D? So we can actually take, I think they're, they're both the same. We just um, 
uh, placed two different ones so we can show that you can actually also create subfolders. So um, I'll say, okay, all elements in current PID, okay. And you see, we got the drawing name, the equipment item tag. Again, does not exist. It's filtered out. And um, so you see this in 3D actually takes four different um, values, um, different connections. So uh, we'll stick to this one here. Uh, let's adapt this. Let's take in 3D out and uh, say, but actually want all elements from all PNIDs. I want all equipments uh, in here and check for. No problem. Once I click OK, you see we get all the drawing names, the equipment item tags, and we can also sort by the equipment item tag. And um, we can actually tell which ones are uh, modeled in 3D and which are non existent. And uh, this could also be checked by when I click on this one, true. And I go there, it says one 3D object found. And when I click on the link, we actually get straight to the linked uh, object in 3D. So, um, big question here is, okay, um, what if I need much deeper going reporting? Uh, if I want to uh, do real, um, completely Boolean um, requests and queries. Um, for this, um, we have a different product, It's uh, which also some of you might know, it's the Universal Reporter. That's really bringing um, high-end sophisticated um, reporting functions. But for a quick report directly out of the 3D model without um, having to extract uh, or collect uh, any external uh, additional data just by what's included in UPV, um, the reporting functions of uh, UPV itself are highly sophisticated already. So I hope I was able um, to give you a quick overview and um, if you have any questions Feel free to ask um, in case we will not be able to answer all, all questions uh, now, as most of you might know um, who have attended our uh, webinars, um, we'll do our best to answer those as quickly as possible by email. So um, question is, what are the limits of reporting? As I said, it's um, a really easy to use, easy to handle um, reporting engine, but if you uh, really want to um, compare um, 3D and um, P90, for example, to the last detail, um, this will probably not work. Um, therefore, um, Universal Report is uh, rather recommended also for um, uh, big amounts of data um, that cannot be uh, easily handled by us. this sophisticated but yet simple reporting tool. Um, another question, this is a question um, from uh, this morning uh, from our first webinar is, what export formats do you support? Currently, we're supporting um, export to uh, Excel uh, files, um, which means Excel as X files, but um, due to um, requests also from uh, customers and also for interconnection with other software, we will add a CSV as a um, as an basically text-based open format that most other software can read and um, process further. So what licenses are needed um, for this reporting? In this case, 
if you have UPV running, basically it's already included. So no additional license is required um, unless you want to re-import some data. So edit it and re-import it. Um, you might need uh, the API or, or SDK depending on um, the way you want to, you want to integrate the data, but um, that's also something that we would have to look at individually. Um, the reporting features I showed you today, they are um, basically included in um, everything you already have. So another question is how to reconfigure uh, them, the reports. Okay, I can show that very quickly. Um, as I've already shown, um, the existing reports here can be added, for example, the pipe MTO by clicking on this gear symbol. And uh, now I can reconfigure and say, okay, I want just the selected elements of, I want all, all I want um, maybe the instrument um, item tag. Oh, yeah, that's from PID, but um, let's say the line ID added to it. And um, okay, these don't have line IDs, for example. Um, and you can again click on copy and paste them back into your report um, definitions file. So um, this change will then be persistent. Next time you open up, you will have uh, the coding. Um, fields. So um, another option is reconfiguration uh, the manual way. So when you open up the report definition file, um, I can say, for example, here um, I want sort column to be name or sending or uh, state descending or by pipeline. Um, also, the UPV manual you have some settings. Um, for example, for uh, the field forbidden, so um, that you, for example, cannot uh, edit um, the query anymore. So what I just did with the gear, if the admin decides, okay, the report has to look exactly this way, so uh, he can set a um, editing forbidden. Um, so when the UPV starts from the server, um, the report can only be generated the way it's been set up. And um, just like I added um, additional attributes um, to the report uh, in UPV with the uh, user interface, um, I can also go ahead and uh, add those attributes on here. So every attribute in a different column. And down here, you see this valve list report um, that we did for the uh, data sheets. Um, so you can continue basically uh, as long as you have columns left to use in Excel. And um, trust me, it's a lot of them. <laughs> Um, another question is now, is it possible to include uh, some logic on the reports? For example, uh, amount of wells based on connections or um, exchange per meter of pipe, joints that need, uh, need heat treatment and so on. Um, you can add custom attributes and give those custom attributes certain values and then um, report on those two. Um, besides that, since um, you can do an export to Excel, um, you can also define um, some rules and formulas in Excel that will actually um, lead to that with those results. So um, for UPV itself, this is um, not possible to export it that way. Or as I said, if it's really a huge amount of data, then um, our universal reporter suite um, has 
functions and has the uh, option to actually create your own formulas uh, for exporting. Um, and very similar it goes also for our uh, quality assurance module um, that supports you with the um, solving a request like that. Um, if you upgrade the model, does the state of the clash remain or do you have to reconfigure them? So these uh, custom attributes um, we saved here, they can be actually saved back also in Excel file. Um, we do this with this button here. I'll say, okay, custom attribute, state so this is now the state of our clashes so you see um, all those we have not uh, set a state for are gray and the green one is none so this is okay and also want to change this one here to none you will see it will turn green and you can save this whole custom attribute settings um, to file and load them individually or you can even um, place them uh, directly in your data folder, then um, they have to follow a certain name and this is um, um, attribute data where um, the settings are saved to. Um, so you see, since we started this, um, I've, okay, I did, change, did some changes here, but for example, say uh, we want to call it by construction state, hopefully, we got some here. Yes. So uh, even though I did not change this, this was automatically loaded um, with the model. So I hope I was uh, able to give you um, a good overview and um, answer as uh, many questions as was possible in this um, period of time. Um, the other unanswered questions, I'll be um, glad to answer um, successively by email. So there's only one thing left for me to say. Thank you for your attention. And um, for further information, feel free to contact us anytime. Um, for general information about um, CA Experts software, um, write to info at caexperts.com for um, support requests or eval requests or similar. Um, contact uh, either the support or your uh, sales representative and um, we'll be glad to find the right solution together with you to make the job even easier and better for you. Thank you a lot and um, yeah, have a great day. Goodbye.